Hello chess friends and welcome to Zaros Chess Channel and welcome to my chess strategy and chess tactics series. So in this series we're following some great strategies that have been played in chess history with some great tactical and positional elements and I think uh, this in this series you can improve your tactical and also your strategical or planning skills in a game, middle game very easily. But we'll try uh, something else today. Today I have prepared for you something special. To do. Today we'll play the game uh, find the best move, find the best next move but uh, and uh, in this uh, in this game first of all i want to solve uh, this positional problems in the middle game and uh, this is now my first example i want you to pause the video and uh, try to find really the best continuations i'm not saying uh, that you if you find this move that you will immediately win the game it's not about that it's about solving uh, positional problems because uh, solving positional problems is only possible if you read the position very good. The reading of the position is the most important thing I, uh, I think in, in a chess game, uh, in order to maybe find a clear plan how to proceed here. And this game uh, was a game played by uh, Nathan Marheimer against Aron Nimcovic. Aron Nimcovic with the black pieces. And that's said, pause the video take your time uh, try really to find simplifications here in the position it's black to move and I think uh, we can we can really really after this move have a calm game sort of so okay take your time okay uh, the best move here in the continuation of the game is to move bishop on f5 but uh, what does it mean? Here, after uh, bishop takes on f5, uh, here our Nimchich, of course, took. After castling, we have bishop on c3. And after b takes c3, let's evaluate the position a little bit. Now, uh, there is this problem uh, of whites of this life course. Uh, you see, we can uh, try to occupy this life course with our knight, maybe something like knight on um, b6, knight on e4, and here knight on a5, and knight on, knight on c4. But I wanted to uh, to go back. Uh, why is this bishop on f5 really the best move? The the idea behind this move is uh, to get rid of the bishops. And uh, whenever you have this static center setup, like in this position, this d5 and d4, whenever you see the static center setup, it's all about looking at your bishops. So first of all, uh, you see we have a light square pawn here. Uh, our opponent has a dark square pawn. So it means in a potential end game, our light square bishop would be a bad piece because it's blocked out by its own pawn and it could uh, it, the bishop could be only used as a protective piece uh, for the pawn on d5. On the other hand, the same problem has white. White has the problem, he has a dark square bishop and in a potential end game, this bishop would be only protecting the d4 pawn. And uh, the more important thing is if you try to change a little bit of the situation in the center with some moves like c4 or from black perspective on c5, then you always risk to have this isolated pawn situation. For instance, if black tries something like c5, I just want you to imagine the position of maybe 5-10 moves. If you try to play c5, then after d takes c5, you see we're continuing the game with this with this d5 pawn and i just wanted to show you how great uh, aron imchovic played the game here bishop on f5 knight takes on f5 i said castling here bishop c3 b c3 and now castling was played here queen on uh, d3 and now we have knight on d6 very important move to create as i said attacking this holes in your opponent's position but that was all possible because first of all we get rid of the defender of this light horse which was the light horse bishop and here after bishop on f5 now you see it's really possible to attack here the squares the weak squares in your opponent's position here the square e4 and also here the square c4 in the continuation knight on g5 was played g6 i'm not going to sh show you now uh, this game from this tactical point of view i just wanted to show you how aron Nimcovic attacked this life first. so queen on f6 we have bishop on d2 and now uh, h6 kicking away the knight king on uh, h7 knight on h2 here queen on uh, h8 Queen on e3 and now queen on g7, queen on f3 and now knight on e4. So see how important it was uh, really to get rid of this light square bishop. Now after bishop on c1 we have even possibility to even more support the knight. And here after queen on d3 now a very nice positional move. Uh, knight on a5 and here after f4 queen on d7 was played. Here knight on, knight on f3 but now queen on c6, knight on e5, queen on e6 and now 
b6 and now very important move this knight on c4 if white trades off this knight we have of course d takes uh, c4 and this knight will be the best piece on the board because it cannot be attacked by a minor piece it cannot be attacked by the bishop so from the positional point of view this would be of course completely completely winning for black so as said i hope you found this first move i'm as i said uh, these are not moves uh if you uh, if you just see them that you will immediately win the game but after bishop on f5 i think after taking we have solved really our positional problem so let's see now another example let's find now the best move in the last move black tried here f6 and let's play like gary kasparov here it's a game played by uh, the legendary gary against ralph akeson and here i wanted you also to pause the video and try to really find the best continuation in the game so um first of all in this position you should realize your pawn structure it's really a dynamic pawn structure there are really some problems uh, here in the position because our e4 pawn is attacked but there is uh, when we have these positions the dynamic pawn structures you see in this first example we have sort of a static pawn, stru pawn structure now we have a dynamic pawn structure we should always try uh, to get the pawn majority somehow because the pawns are rolling and uh, we have here the possibility to maybe do something whenever you see uh, a four and three situation there is maybe something to do with our pawns of course here i think e5 doesn't bring you so much because uh, black can simply wait or even take and maybe regroup a little bit with something like bishop on e7 but here gary kasparov finds a very nice tactical shot he played bishop on f6 immediately so now after uh, rook takes on f6 we have e5 and now the rook has to retreat but now very nice f6 again with the checkmate threat on g7 here uh, rook on uh, c7 was played but now gary kasparov connect two pawns on the sixth rank and this game is basically game over for black because if we manage to connect two uh, two, uh, two pass pawns here on the sixth rank even the rook cannot stop this rook, uh, these two pawns and this is completely completely winning even with a piece down so let's see the continuation queen on d8 now simply uh, very nice e7 rook takes on e7 f takes on e7 and here um, gary kasparov of course took now we have the advantage the material advantage we have the rook for a bishop still many moves have to be played in order to win this game but uh, i hope you realize that after this very nice sacrifice on f6 uh, gary kasparov had the initiative uh, the pawns were rolling all over the board and we had really some great attacking possibilities uh, as said this uh, will this games that I sh i'm showing you will be also in the description below so you can uh, watch the whole games analyze them for yourselves from this opening point of view and also from this end game point of view i just wanted to show you this strategical elements of um, here the pawn mobility here we have this pawn staticity sort of here it was very important to create outposts here it was very important to get the spawns from so let's see now another example uh, here we have a uh, game played by Lev Polgalevsky uh, here versus Tig uh, Tigran Petrosyan and here in the continuation uh, knight on f4 was played by um, Tigran Petrosyan a very nice move and after the move uh, rook from c to a5 let's again try to find the best continuation here so uh, it's uh, really really uh, a natural move I, as i said i wanted to pause the video maybe really try to find uh, some aggressive ideas here in 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 white's position so in black to move so uh, here the best move is to play the move queen on g4 because uh, when we have a position like this it's uh, really a dynamic position although the center is static like in this example we have a static center uh, but there is really a great piece activity of blacks here we have a very nice knight on f4 we have a bishop on h6 so whenever we have these types of positions you should always try to watch your pieces so you should always evaluate the pieces so this knight it's on a very active square so of course we want to keep it like this so basically this knight uh, doesn't need any improvements this bishop is really on the best attacking square it doesn't re really need uh, improvements so uh, let's see the rook the rook on d8 uh, 
doesn't need i think any improvements because it's an open file and it creates this very dangerous battery supported with the queen this rook uh, can maybe improve something like rook on e8 or it can play rook on f7 but i don't think that both of these uh, moves are really improving black's position let's see the knight uh, the knight has uh, maybe some potential moves like knight on c8 knight on a8 knight on c4 is not possible because the bishop is covering that so probably the best move is not a move with a knight so that's why whenever we evaluate the position like this now it's probably a queen move because a pawn move like h5 or g5 doesn't bring us so much so that's why here i hope you found this best move it's the move queen on g4 now it gives uh, really white the opportunity, uh, pardon me, black the opportunity to, to attack. And the main problem, uh, the main attacking problem or defensive problem for white is that um, he has maybe to give up here this light square bishop. So in the game, uh, bishop on c1 was played and now very nice move rook on d6 here by Tigran Petrosan. Here we have rook on a2 and now doubling up rook. So you see, uh, again, we have a similar position. By evaluating these pieces, all of these pieces are basically on good squares. As I said, uh, this knight maybe needs improvement, but it's really hard for the knight to find some good squares. So that's why probably the next best move is with the rook. So rook on d6 here, we have rook on a2, and now, of course, improving the position of another rook. Here, a knight on uh, e1 was played, and now simply trading off some more pieces. After trading off the queens, also, we have now the possibility here to create a very, very dangerous attack on the back rank because these white pieces are too passive. And here, Tigran Petersen won the game very, very easily. As I said, I'm not going to show you now the whole game, but this is now a playable position. And now, because we have played this very active chess, now we can try to improve our knight also on, on a very, very nice square on c4. So you see how the position changed because we played on simply improvements of, of the position. So in the first example, we have the spawn staticity, we have here the pawn dynamics, and we have here improvements of the position of pieces. So these are three very important uh, elements of a chess game. So let's see now uh, here uh, a game. It was also played by uh, Mikhail Tal, very nice game, I think very great tactical game, it could be also on my best chess games of all time list, it's really a great attacking brilliancy played by the legendary uh, magician from Riga, Mikhail Tal. Here after Queen on d6, I want you also to pause the video and try to find the best move. So we have again a strategic or sort of tactical element here, uh, we have uh, the back rank problems, but there is a problem about uh, in white's position if we try uh, to play immediately rook on e8 uh, then of course rook on f8 can be played and you see we cannot deflect the king from the defense of the rook because uh, it's it's a good protection and then the queen is also covering here this e6 square so um, after uh, here uh, in this position after queen on d6 here i want you to find the best move uh, Please don't use engines, try to solve this sort of chess puzzle for yourself. I think uh, it's solvable because there is one tactical element, this deflection or this decoy element. Because here Mikhail Tal, of course, uh, one of the best tacticians in chess, found the move bishop on c5. Now there is a problem because uh, the queen has to react and here after queen on c5 we have now the possibility to play rook on e8. Now it's a different uh, position because after rook, the rook on f8 we have uh, queen on e6. This is now the main problem. You see we have deflected the queen from this d6 square. Very important. Now after uh, king on uh, h8 here Mikhail Tal found queen on f7 and this game is over. Because if you take of course with the queen a check then we can take takes and of course after rook takes an f8 you can cover but this is completely completely win again so uh, of course you cannot take if you take uh, uh, you cannot take with the rook so th that's why you lose the rook anyway and again this is completely completely weak. so let's see now our last example here um, it's a game played by Tigran Petrosian against Bobby Fischer I'm sorry Bobby 
uh, that I have to show you a uh, losing game of Bobby Fischer's but uh, here it was I think a great positional brilliancy by Tigran Petrosan here I want you also to pause the video and try to find maybe the best move sort of a strategical plan here um, I'm not saying after this move that you will the game immediately but this is really a very important move if you read this position very good okay I hope you found this move because uh, here the best move I think is to move knight on e5 uh, cementing our knight on this very active square uh, but if we read this position again we have the static center setup and uh, in this setups as I said also in one many of my videos it's very important to occupy the squares uh, that are supported by the spawns uh, here in the center so of course from white's perspective it would be the c5 square but the c5 square is already occupied by the pawn so that's why it's very important for us to occupy the e5 you see black has done this uh, already bobby fisher has already played his outpost but there is this main problem about this position from black's perspective because we have this stonewall formation sort of here in the center uh, this setup of pawns whenever you see the stonewall formation uh, there is one strategical problem uh, in black's position because black has advanced already the d5 pawn and already this f5 pawn that's why uh, if we create an outpost this knight on e5 can never be kicked away by a pawn on the other hand this knight on e4 after something like knight on e5 can always be kicked away uh, with the move f3 so this is a huge difference of white can do white can uh, really kick away this knight and you see how uh, Tigran Petersan did it so knight on e5 here Bobby took uh, we have knight on e5 d takes e5 bishop on g5 and now very important move bishop on d4 although this bishop is blocked out by its own pawn this bishop is also blocked out by its own pawn so this uh, activities of two bishops if we compare them let's call them even uh, these are two bad bishops but still this bishop has sort of a defensive function creates the support of this very important uh, space advantage that white has created here uh, on the fifth rank and this is very 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 important so in the continuation uh, we can try now finally to play our f3 idea because the bishop is also covering this e3 and on the other hand this likely bishop of blacks is simply too bad this bishop is also not good also although it's aiming uh, here on this e3 but here bishop on h6 was played by bobby fisher trying to get some kind of a support here and uh, also liberated the square for the knight because now of course tigran petersen played the move f3 knight on g5 was played and now you see c6 a very very cool move uh, which really breaks the structure in, in Bobby Fischer's game. If you hear b6, you see here um, Tigran Petrosan played a powerful boa constrictor game, uh, simply not allowing here this bishop to escape. And we have now the so called locked bishop situation. And okay, Bobby Fischer tried with a6, but now a4, a takes b, a takes b, and now rook takes on a1, queen takes on a1. And I'm not going to sh show you the whole game, I just wanted to evaluate the position here white I think is completely winning this bishop is bad we can occupy um, at the back rank here somehow maybe with a rook we have also a very powerful square for our knight knight on f4 we can double up somehow and attack the c7 weaken so Tigran Petersen won this game very effectively and uh, this was really a positional brilliancy against the legendary Bobby okay i hope you found these moves that i um, um, in of these five examples will continue to make it this uh, videos like this so, so i will always have five examples so you can also check your uh, strategical and tactical skills in the middle game uh, i hope someone has five out of five it would it would be a great accomplishment i think if you found all of these five best moves in the continuation i think then you have, have a good positional understanding and also a nice tactical understanding of middle games and i want you also to congratulate to, to to you if you have solved all of these five positional problems in the game okay uh, i hope you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other uh, basics in chess videos in which i show you opening principles middle game strategies and the end game strategies and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzle videos in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen in a chess game and you can also watch my previous video from my chess strategy and chess tactics videos 
see you soon with some more uh, videos and with some cool examples chess is the best of course